You can see what? Uh, I could see the um street lights, but it, street when lights it freezes, move, move. when it freezes, it like we don't we can't see him move. Like it's just, but then when I see it move, I'm like, Stuck. oh, the 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 connection's good. He's going That's, past the street lights. Like, like, what are we doing? This is <laughs> what the world like. What a crazy life this is. Like, it's a weird timeline, it's man. Super, it's a weird timeline. Time yeah, I'm driving. I'm Hello, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I am your host, Andrew, and tonight I'm going to ask Father Turbo and Cyprian what was, of recent memory or whatever, the worst movie you've seen in, like, a while? You're like, oh, gosh, that was off. Like, just thinking about it, you know? I mean, the worst movie that I I still, to this day, it's like, man, um, Airbender. Oof. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty bad one. Man, that's terrible. Oh, the live, the live version. Yeah, the live, the live Airbender. Terrible. Yeah. Um. Well, I I don't know. I I won't say movie, but I will say like s- cinematic series. It was the the new uh the new Lord of the Rings thing that Amazon. Oh, Rings of Power. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that was. I I found myself watching it after the first episode was so bad, just be like, I was having cognitive dissonance because I was like, <laughs> it can't be this bad. So Sip, like, man, I want to ask you, worse. I want to ask you, cause I'm never going to watch it. Go ahead. What was it? We want to spend all night. I know, but like, just what was it? Like, it was one of those things like there wasn't any like redeeming quiet. Like, what was it? The acting was bad. Mm-hmm the there were no there were no stakes there was also <laughs> there was also no one like the the plot was just flimsy um the the obviously you know everybody said the woman that they got to play galadriel was terrible which mm. was true that was and and also it was I think what happened was they diverged so far from the source material mm. that there was no chance for it to be good. And 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 I think what I, I I saw this very early on as they were doing it, but basically because you had an entire world that had been laid out and all of these characters had a relationship to one another, that when you try to <laughs> have these characters but then you're going to just decide what the relationships between them and the world and their motivation is going to be there's no way for you to get it right there's no there's no way for you to re sort of recreate something that's good maybe you could do it if you started over with all new characters and everything but it's like because they left in something from the source material but then took some things out oh so it's like just fan fiction and switch things it yeah yes it's basically bad fan fiction yeah, that's a that's great way to put it and and you notice it even if you're not familiar with the source material like there were th- wasn't like, there like there a things- wasn't there like a they took our jobs moment like i heard it this was like yes, meme they're in numenor they're in numenor oh that 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 scene that scene in particular where i was like guys and they spent like a billion dollars on it i was like guys this is terrible that basically what happens is there's a scene where everybody's like oh the you're breaking the, up. the yeah. elves are you know this elf is gonna come and then the uh-oh yeah you're lagging down? a little Am bit you're lagging Am out a little bit oh so it's okay so basically there's a there's a scene where this guy like talks down a mob you know, like all of a sudden this mob comes up. He's just walking through the square and then he comes and he just like 
joins up and then he talks down this mob and everybody gathers around. It's one of these scenes. And then he says, now drinks for everyone. And out of nowhere come cocktail waitresses holding glasses oh, of wine lazy. that they distribute out to the mob. That's just lazy, right? And I was like, <laughs> where did the, where were the cocktail? Dude, you were just walking through the marketplace. There was no, you didn't plan this. Yeah. And it's, it's bad. that throughout the series, throughout the series, dude. That's bad. Yeah. And it, and that stinks too, because I am by no means the biggest Tolkien fan, but I love Tolkien. And like okay. every time I go back and read <clears throat> or more now these days, listen to an audiobook of this, it's like slipping into a warm bath. Okay. It's just like wonderful and lovely and it's not complicated. Like there's no like gender stuff or anything. It's just like the heroes are the heroes. The villains are the villains. And actually like at the end of fellowship of the ring, J.R. Tolkien wrote this like um, afterwards or something like that. And it was really, really, of course, it was really, really well written. But basically he talked about like a lot of people said this is an analogy for World War One, And it's not simply for the fact that like if the allies had obtained the ring of power, they would have never thought to destroy it. They would have been like, no, we are holding on to this. Like this is not an analogy. Like nobody in the world is this good. They would have held on to it and found a way to manipulate the ring so that they could have used it against the Axis powers. But it was really, really, it, I don't know, like, it, yeah, I've I've heard varying things about the show, and it goes from it was okay to yeah, I I watched one up. Did you make it through the whole thing? Yep, I watched the whole thing. Man, did you I hate watched, watch I the whole thing, it. or were you like, is this going to get better? I was I was actually watching to see it was like a train wreck i was basically <laughs> like i mean look i was in tv right and i was on a show that became like a cult classic there was no marketing it was all word of mouth that we went six seasons because it was just the stories were done so well even though it's reality tv right and that's people fell in love with the stories and they fell in love with these characters this i was watching to be like how how do you screw this up so bad? It was almost like a cultural commentary that like given <laughs> every tool in the book, whereas the show that I was on, Showtime always gave us the worst budget, like so low, you know, the last season, and we were the top weekday show. The last season, the entirety of the marketing that we got from Showtime was a tweet. Like, mm. hey, the show's coming back on, season premiere, one tweet. But we still were the top weekday show, right? top rated because word of mouth and people loved it. This thing, they had a billion dollars and it was like, how badly can you screw this up? And it was just like, well, I guess this basically means that the industry of movie making is basically dead. It's like derivative because yeah. you would think with a billion dollars that you would have been able to hire the best people. And well, it looked beautiful. It now, looks beautiful. I would have agreed with you, Cyprian, up until this last week. I finally started watching Andor. And Andor is absolutely amazing. And I'm just going to say that, the Star Wars show. It's well I done. I only made it one episode. I only made it one episode. No, 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 no. No, two, not, episodes, this, two episodes. This is not going to be this is not going to be this show. This is not going to be this podcast. I'll just say, bro, you have to make it to the third episode. I promise everything from episode one and episode two will come together in the third episode. And not only is it done well, there's like unnecessary beauty in that show. Like it's a work of art. Like the ending of the third episode, this stuff goes down and it shows everyone's reaction to it. It's like these long shots of all the characters you've met so far reacting to this thing that happened. It's very, very well done. Anyway. That is actually the sign of a good of a good series. And it continues. It's supposed to take three episodes. Oh, okay. You, it is supposed to take three episodes to line up because that's that's your mini arc, Act One, Two, Three. So we've so gone you to have the your first... mini your mini narrative that's gonna that's gonna then be fractal and take you through the whole entire thing. So then I'm just ending the second arc now. I just got through the end of the second arc, and I was like, I cannot wait to watch the show. Every time I talk about it, I just want to go watch it. Anyway. Worst thing I've seen in a long time was The Eternals. I've talked about it before. This was an absolutely abysmal movie. I have not hardly one single good thing to say about it. So um, 
for real it was absolutely awful no chemistry between any characters horrible plot not just not done well it's what happens when is that the one with angelina jolie yeah and she was terrible oh man was she terrible she was absolutely terrible like i don't think there was one good actor and that introduces one of my favorite characters one of my favorite comic book characters is black knight i love black knight and they introduce him and i could not care less so and i certainly hope they don't make a second one but they probably will because it was woke af so i actually have a fun game that we could play before we got started um i'm gonna i'm gonna and maybe this is nothing but i thought it'd be it could be cool i talked a little bit about it with father last night and these are well-known saints i'm not picking some obscure like 15th century martyr or something like that but i thought i could read like we'll start with two and if it's fun we'll do a third one uh okay. a treparian and leave out the name of the person and see if you can guess who it is so okay, okay. We'll try. maybe this is nothing maybe this is okay. nothing all it's right cool so this, for the audience yeah so this is the first one and i thought it might be a little bit more interactive and helpful and productive than talking about sucky movies okay but go here we go so you are a pillar of orthodoxy hierarch Supporting the church with divine doctrines, you proclaim the son to be of one essence with the father, putting Arius to shame. Righteous father, entreat Christ God to grant us his great mercy. Nicholas? Mm, No, no, no. It could be, but think of the direct contradiction between Arius and this other person. Or the direct, like, antagonism. I'm blanking. Athanasius. So, Athanasius. Athanasius. There Athanasius. Go. Okay. And I tried to pick really big ones. Like, um, okay. So <laughs> this one would be a little bit too obvious. So I'm going to do another one. Um, no, that well, one do is. Do the not... obvious one. So at least so I can get it. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, but th- there's just no, there's no way you're not going to get that one right away. Okay, here we go. Oh, golden tongue preacher proclaiming the risen Christ, everlasting God. Oh, yeah, that's easy because it's his name. You did what? No, it's not no. Chrysostom. Oh, not okay, Chrysostom. okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Everlasting guide of the cross bearing certain ethnicity of people. I'm not going to say it because you get it right away. Saint Nikolai. That... Yes, Saint Nikolai. It's Saint Nikolai. Saint Nikolai Velimirovich. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. he's the okay. Serbian. Uh, Serbian Chrysostom. Chrysostom. Yeah. I'm going to do one more. Serbian Chrysostom. I'm going to do one more because I think this is fun. There's a little energy here. So okay. one more second. Right. Um... Where were you when they made me do icebreakers when I was working for a nonprofit? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. This is a good one. <laughs> Orthodox icebreakers. Yeah. Um. Okay, so this one might be a little bit harder. But, oh, wait, actually, I just took a picture. So vamp for one second, one <laughs> second, one second. No, this one's good. This one's good. Okay, okay here we go. Well, okay. As a, you don't need to vamp anymore. You're good. As a okay, zealous good. advocate of the, Orthodox faith, uh, of the Orthodox faith, as a caring solicitor for the land of Russia, faithful to the ruler, rules and image of a pastor, preaching repentance and life in Christ, an awesome servant and administrator of God's sacraments, a daring intercessor for people's sake, a good and righteous father, good and righteous father, healer and wonder, uh, wonder miracle worker, the praise of the town of and the decoration of our church beseech the all merciful God to reconcile the world. Well, you're not going to give us the town. It would give it away. It would give it away. Red hot chili pepper style. Well, St. John, St. John, uh, St. John of Kronstadt. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right. That was fun. I I thought yes. that was okay. That was okay. cool. It was an Orthodox game. All right. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So you want to talk about AI, right? Is that what? No, you were only talking about Mm-mm. ecumenism. You were talking about ecumenism. Yep. We're, okay. Yeah. I want to. I, I want to. I ran across this thing. It's brand new. It just sort of debuted this week. I had not heard about this project. But I saw these photos in a tweet, and I was like, actually, it was uh, Father Peter Hears kind of quote tweeted this, and he was like, this is the religion of the future. And I went and I looked, and I was like, what is this? So I'm going to show show you guys this um, here. So it's called, 
let me make sure that I'm sharing my, yeah, sharing my video as well. Okay. Okay. So this thing is called Abrahamic Family House. And it's in Abu Dhabi. They built it. And this was what I saw. It's uh, His Eminence, the Cardinal Michael Fitzgerald, hosted the first service at His Holiness Francis Church earlier today. First off, they named this church after Pope Francis. So a living person, they named a church. Yeah. It says, the church is now welcoming worshipers for prayer. So then here were the photos, okay? So this is the, as like there's this little tiny cross and there's another sort of small cross. But look, this is what the church looks like. Hmm. And I said, this looks like something straight out of hell. Hmm. This looks like wow. a church in a this looks like a church in a nightmare, dude. Mm -hmm. That so, like these sharp these sharp things are gonna drop on you while you're worshiping. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's a, it's knives. It's a bunch of knives coming down. But here's the crazy part, guys. It's a trap, right? Here's the crazy part. On this complex is a quote unquote Christian church, a similarly pagan style synagogue. What is it? And a similarly pagan temple style, although this one is a little more mosque like. Yeah, I was going to say that's a mosque. Well, because it's in Abu Dhabi. Oh, right? oh, I mean, this, this looks the, like a mosque. Is this the three cubes that they've been they've been working on? This is the three cubes right here. Yeah, the year six 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 just <laughs> opened. Here, here it is, Abrahamic family house. This is the artistic rendering. Turn the, turn this down so it's not crazy. I mean, this does not look. This is definitely the religion of the future. It's lagging a little bit. That's and this okay. is open now. Like they've already started doing services. So, Father, you talked about it's during... Lagging. Yeah, you're lagging. It's okay. It's okay, buddy. Okay. Um, I'm stopping my share. It's okay. But, um, Father, you had talked about that the church has specific shapes for specific reasons. Mm -hmm. Like the dome versus the you know the um well, I will, yeah i mean a traditional byzantine church is um a square with a circle and that's the earth and heaven being united you know? okay there you go so uh, what would is there significance behind a block there's well, no there's six, not six, even six it's six it's six, 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 six cubes three it's, of them yeah <laughs> there it is it's right oh. out in the open hmm I wonder if any break layers helped like sponsor this. Oh, I wouldn't. One hundred percent. Well, what it's what it's based on is it's based on. Hopefully, I'm not still looking like crazy because I had to look this up. Um, so it's based on the signing of the document on human fraternity by Pope Francis and Grand Imam Ahmed. Al Tayeb in February 2019. So this is like the manifestation of that ecumenist document. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that it's like of all the times that it's like, okay, yeah, I feel like the last two weeks, man, it's been like in preparation for this Lent, the demons have just been at it even at it well did you see the pictures that came out uh today of uh, the president's trip to kiev yeah the schismatics yeah the schismatics mm -hmm. and then the 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 evil one mm -hmm. um, <laughs> voldemort voldemort, voldemort. <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah i mean it, it's it's interesting to me because um there's definitely like another shift has happened, meaning we're sitting here and then everything just kind of picked up and moved this way again to the left, you know? And those of us kind of trying to sit in the middle, it's like we're, we're finding ourselves right on the right because the, the real push is going to come, I think, pretty strong 
people are going to feel it more soon. I think with families and stuff in regards of you guys are bigots, you know? Mm, um, yeah. And, and I think this whole thing with um, the exposure, it's interesting because there's these outlets that are talking about, and I mean, it's, it's becoming enough of a story, right? Last year it was with the quote unquote infiltration um the white supremacist infiltration of orthodoxy or whatever you know mm. um but it was funny because i jumped on you know i it's, every once in a while i have to i jumped on facebook uh this last weekend just to kind of like just see what's going on and it was man it was like people are, are <laughs> i was like is this 2016 people are still talking like they're still using super crazy, like wild rhetoric. You know, and I'm just like, look, there's not a clan member lurking under every no, like rock. You know what I mean? It was wild, but it but it all ties into this language, and it all connects because all these people. It's like, and and again, I hate to say it because it's just gonna feel like old hat to everyone, but there really was two to three posts removed of the person who's, you know, um. We need to basically something to the effect of we need to care more about the safety of queer kids than the feelings of like adults or something like that. Those same people are like one to two posts removed from some sort of crazy statement about Ukraine and crazy mm -hmm. statement about, you know, the kind of intolerance of or and these are Orthodox people, by the way. The crazy and oh, you buried the lead, Father. These are Orthodox people. Okay, all right. Uh, Forgive me. Unquote. Yeah. Forgive me. Wait, there's Forgive Orthodox me. people saying things about the safety of trans kids. Yeah. Who cares if the world is? Who cares if the world says it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I expect the world to say that. Yeah. Forgive me. Forgive me. Yeah. I expect the world to say that. You have quote unquote Orthodox people talking like that, and then on top of that, you are deemed, you know. Um, which is, man, I'm surprised I'm still walking around because it's like, you can only call me a racist for so long before it just starts looking ridiculous or like all these other things. And and that's, that's kind of where we're at because the, the temperature of, you know, all of these um, kind of accusations against anyone who's even just remotely trying to hold to the tradition of being, you know, trans, whatever, fill in the blank, alphabet phobic, um, racist, and now also to um, warmongering, all that stuff, you know, if, if you even begin to question the rhetoric around Ukraine, like that, this next step, I think is this really hard push for ecumenism. This is what I'm trying to get at. All of those things have been a not a distraction, but they've been, um, they've almost been like the scouts. They've been the primers sure. to prepare for this big push for this hard ecumenism that's coming. Um, and it, it's going to be real tough for people to resist it. Because again, I'm talking about these, these people that I'd seen, they're all Orthodox folk, um, so, quote unquote, you know. Theoretically, I might work for an organization that just took, um, you know, maybe I, maybe I do that. They took uh faith based mm -hmm. out of their mission statement mm -hmm. that they're no longer a faith based ministry. Wow. Yeah. And I was talking when someone, I was talking to someone about it and they said like, that just bothers me. It doesn't seem like a big deal. I was like, well, the devil wins by inches. You yeah, know, he wins by sure. inches. He he is for not. Sure. He's okay with just cranking the water up a little bit at, sure. the at a time. So sure. that totally makes sense. That like, I mean, because if it all came at once, we'd all see it. We'd all be like, "Oh, I know what this is." Yeah. But like, which is why it's really really interesting to read stuff like Wheel of Time, which is a fantasy book series, and where it talks about like how prophecies actually would come into play. And it's like, well, everyone would see this thing happening. It's so obvious. But in the book, when you when this this prophecy is being fulfilled, everyone is still like, well, we're not exactly sure what's happening here. 
Like, is this guy the dragon reborn? Well, he's done these things. Yeah, but that's open to interpretation. Like, we don't really know if that's what's mm-hmm. happening here. And it's like, I when I was reading it, I was like, this is really interesting. And now that I'm living it, it's like, it is really interesting because now I can sit back and be like, you know, like, like the Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio, or, uh, yeah, whatever, um, where he's does like he's got the beer and he points at the TV. Like, I'm just like doing that, like all the time, like it's in revelations, like this is happening. And people are still like, yeah, well, we don't know. We know we don't really know what it's going to be like. So it is what it well, is. Well, but the, the, I think that's, that's part of a, a trick and a tool of ecumenism, right? Because it's like, if there is no orthodoxy, if there is no right way, then that means it's always like, well, but our tradition doesn't say that that's what this is. Right. So, right. so then it's not like it's, right. it's, it'll be, it'll have to be a, a consensus among us before we'll all agree to do it. And it's like, well, you'll never get a consensus among, <laughs> which is, uh, I mean, you, you it, can't because there's only one right yeah, way. <laughs> yeah. It just, it, it cracks me up because for all of the, um, kind of pejorative stereotypes that people would want to put against traditional, you know, Orthodox Christians. Um, it's just funny because they're actually the ones who are guilty of it. Because if you really start, th- let me give you an example I'm talking about, like, uh, you know, someone will look at us saying like, no, there's only like one, there's only one God, Trinity, Christ is, you know, the son of God, he is God, you know, like all of the the points, right? There's there's, there's one way um, that to people seems offensive because it smacks of being narrow-minded, bigoted, and it reminds them of some kind of, in their mind, it invokes a characteristic of a God that is unloving, unkind, narrow, punitive, all those things, right? Well, the, the funny thing to me about it is, is that actually Catholicism um, Judaism as it stands right now, because what are you doing without a temple? What are you doing without sacrifices? And and Islam, none of those three religions are about the healing and transformation of the human person. They they all center around essentially appeasing a God that is fundamentally displeased with his creation. Fundamentally. Hmm. Hmm. Whereas orthodoxy is not orthodoxy is about the healing of the human person like you know that's why it's so important to get you know again our project what we're trying to do is get people to burn past you know correct historical narratives and the most conservative branch of whatever like who cares uh that's nice but like really who cares because uh, i was talking with the brother about this and it's just one of those great points it's all of those things roman catholicism Judaism, you know, to a, to a lesser degree, I'll, I'll grant that with a little bit I know, you know, um, Islam, like, and of course, Protestantism is just, you know, reductionist Catholicism, but sure. it's, it's always an externalization, pointing at something's wrong, right? Something's wrong with society, something's wrong with these groups of people, whatever. Orthodoxy alone is like, no, it's you. Yeah you're the problem and you need to be healed right like yes get right with god but what does that mean to get right with god what it means to be get right with god because god doesn't need you god loves you but doesn't need you so what it means is get right with god means get get yourself right get yourself right that's what repentance is right and when you when you are repenting then just by proxy, you begin to enter into this um, life of uniting with God, theosis, right? Mm. That's that's why, like, the the big kind of tragedy and irony, I guess, is that they, we alone are the <laughs> we're the only ones saying like, no, 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 like, all that doesn't matter. You doing uh, some sort of slavish obscience without the proper love of one who's been forgiven that's not that's not what christ came to do that's not that's not the point right um and so this this therapeutic 
aspect of spirituality is like not present at all. And, but what is present is, you know, the superficial saccharine of some sort of social movement, the superficial saccharine of let's fellowship, get, fellowship, fellowship, let's get That's along for the is. sake of getting along, yeah. but like, but, but to what end? For real. Like to what end are we right, agreeing right. and getting along on? Right. I mean, end? what's, what, what are we, what are we really saying here? You know, and I think that's something to always look at because um not trying, I'm not by any means being an expert in ecumenical dialogue, but, you know, the ecumenical statements I've read, the thing that I find is always a particular kind of tell. They never make any sense. <laughs> they, every time I read something of a high, quote unquote, caliber of an ecumenical statement, it's just a bunch of mealy mouth gobbledygook which isn't really saying anything that's something that i've always kind of found fascinating personally well it's a lack of a, it's a lack of the end father i think that that was one of the things with orthodoxy where i was like oh this is not the same religion this is not christianity as i had understood it because theosis mm -hmm. because the thing is like well why are we here mm -hmm. like what are we doing what is the purpose of this and it's like theosis and when that's there then you're like oh Oh, orthodoxy is a way. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a way of life. It's a way mm -hmm. of being. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of itself. It's a means. Right. And we're trying to get to theosis with all the rest of it. And ecumenism, you're like, well, what's the end? Oh, well, that we all get along. Right. For and what? it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> For what? <laughs> For that's what? a mean. That's a For means. <laughs> yeah. It's that's almost right. like someone brought us new life and brought it abundantly. You know. I mean. <laughs> Well, they're always talking about an interfaith dialogue. Like, this is the end. The end is that we need to be able to have a dialogue between the faiths. And it's like, yeah, but a dialogue about what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A dialogue to do what? It's like those Christians that are constantly trying to convince you they're not like all those other Christians. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's for what? Like, I don't know, for what? Like, I promise you could be a conservative and not have to be like, or you could be a Christian, not have to be like a right wing conservative. I'm like, is that the basis of your entire faith? Like, I mean, Christ is an afterthought. Mm -hmm. Like, God right. is an afterthought. That's the key right there. Christ is an afterthought. And, and you know, I mean, he is the litmus. He is the litmus, for sure. Well, they're, they're, they've they're they got a political program in that case, right? What they're really, what they're really doing is they're doing politics, and they're calling it, they're calling it religion, but they're doing politics. And it's like, yeah, but politics is supposed to be a means to an end, too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's but, I think it's really just like look at my ability to reconcile like Christianity with like modernism. I mean like really like look at this ability I have to be able to like honestly defend the right to mm -hmm. like rebel against a quote unquote totalitarian government like the US government or whatever that is like it's like the like Christian anarchists or whatever. It's like mm -hmm. yeah, I mean I have this ability to reconcile christ as i understand him with these like radical beliefs that i've adopted and that's and you know so again christ is to, not but again to what end right like okay you're overthrowing the government to what end you know so like what Ethiopia? are you trying I don't know. to do well, i mean it's, it's curing a I, I just the therapeutic aspect i just have to say like for me that shift has been the most potent and it's how I know that this is the truth because none, like you say, father, not no other quote unquote faith has ever presented it as like, Hey, there's a disease. We'll identify the disease. You will right. recognize immediately that you have the disease, right. no matter who you are, where you're from, what your background is, what it is. You will recognize and be like, Oh yes, I have that disease. Oh yes. I see people around me have that disease. That's and it's right. like, we've got here, here's the cure. Here's that's the cure for the disease. And it's like, oh, well, that's not even a religion. That's right. That's just that's just the truth. That's just a way that's, to get healed. <laughs> that's just the social club. Like, well, yeah. Well, well, I well, no. I mean, it's like that's just orthodoxy is a means, right? So it's like if 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 you're in the hospital and you break your arm, right? And they're like, okay, here's oh, what we're gonna do to I cure your saying. to cure yeah. your broken arm. Okay. 
we're going to do this. And then you're going to need to do this. You're going to need to do some physical therapy. You're going to need to come in every once in a while and do this thing. You're going to need to go through. And if you do that, your arm will heal. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, then you have some elsewhere. And they're like, well, just come back to the hospital. See, and you're see, like, for me, what? I just, I just, and again, we're, we're highlighting these things, but this is one of the reasons why let me try. Hopefully I can keep this straight. Like, bearing like uh andrew says like bearing the lead the reason why all this is potent is because it's talking about quote-unquote orthodox christians and it's like well why are they orthodox like these like here's the thing mm. if, if you're leading with anything like well why are you orthodox then if you want to try to build a right utopia here where everyone is in line, whether they like it or not, to, to what end? I mean, because we're talking exactly. left or right. We're talking left or right, you know, like well, to, to what end? Because here's the other thing that, that comes into play with that is when you begin to recognize that holding the quote unquote institute, the people confusing the institution with the, organi with the organism all the time, left or right, confusing the institution with the organism and the people on the left who are like, you know, we got to bring orthodoxy into the modern age. And, and really, here's the thing. Some people out there, just because, you know, they're in our echo chamber, how you want to look at it. I'm sure someone out there can feel like, why are we talking about this? Or, or you get the sense of what we're talking about. But it's good, y'all, every once in a while to get out of the stream and check what's going on on the other side. Check what's going on outside. Because I'm going to tell you something. We are the minority. <laughs> yeah. Just just so you're clear. Just so we're In clear. a big way. Just, just so we're clear. So like, um, if, if like whatever, people who listen to us and people who watch Father Peter Hears and everything else, that's great. Just so you know. If you're listening, whenever, and you you hit some of the same outlets, because you know we all kind of like float around, Buck, you know everybody, you know um, DPH, everybody. It's like, look, we're the minority. Just just to be really, really, really clear with everybody, we're the minority, and the majority of people are really moving towards this place of being like, we're tired of these things, these petty things of like the narrow way. There's only, you know, ecumenism um, and all the Kruchamon, which includes trans rights, you know. Um, sure, whatever. All the Marxist stuff. That's all part of it. It's all it's all part of it because ultimately the narrow path, the, the royal path, the, the narrow path is, it isn't just about getting people to go down the Broadway, it's about actually coming against the narrow path too. And I think I think that's something to be really keen on is that right now, you know, it doesn't feel like the target is on our back per se. But I Feels think it's like it to me, Father. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think that's I think that's a I think that's a mistake to think that because I, I, <laughs> I've had a couple of conversations in the last few weeks where I, I've been starting to realize, um, man, you know, I don't know. I honestly don't know how prepared a lot of us are in regards of um, some sort of emergency happening. And, you know, real quickly, some things being called called a task you know like everyone's used to going to liturgy when and whenever they want but like let me just throw this out there and i'll try to bring it back to like ukraine and everything else but let me just throw this out there um it's all good i'm not trying to be a, a rabble rouser which i guess me saying that probably means i am but just so everyone's clear we said this before, but if somebody closed down two years ago because of the what happened with the government, they're going to close down again unless they came out and repented of it. They're going to close down again. It may not be because of a medical emergency, 
but it's 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 clear that that's their disposition sure. that they will close the church whenever something's happened so from my perspective um you know my emergency plan is like well there's a flash in the sky well gotta get over to the temple <laughs> like For you real. know and like and start praying them 11 start praying the paraclysis and like you know what i mean uh that's how i intend to you know round up my kids my wife round up the nuns y'all are welcome to join me but i'm gonna meet my end whatever that's going to be even if that means whatever degree like i'd, I'd rather meet it doing that thing which has brought me meaning and joy and life and beauty which is worshiping my god yeah. versus versus you know the kind of like slow peeling away of and again this doesn't have to be such a, an extreme example it could be as simple as like uh this is one that can come down the pike in in a year um real astringent laws in regards of um civil rights for churches i.e mm. so, you know marriage things like that that could happen super quick you know what i mean and i i, I imagine lots of churches would easily capitulate you yeah. know certain churches well, that's the reason why it, it, that's the reason and i don't think it, it could i think orthodox it churches by the way just so we're clear I'm not talking about yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. or whatever. I'm talking about Orthodox churches. Well, that's the reason why it will happen fast. <laughs> is because we already know every other church were something to come down like that, that it was like, okay, here's the new restrictions. And mm -hmm. and it could it could be, you know, the types of flashpoints on this. I'm not trying to put anything out there, but let's just say someone who was not even quite yet fully associated with the church, let's say a catechumen, mm -hmm. right? Let's say an Orthodox catechumen does something untoward. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to I'm not going to present any more details than that. Mm -hmm. We've seen the types of things that that the US government is and other western governments yeah. are willing to do in those situations yeah. and that the other churches to show, "Oh, we're we're in. We're in with the the prince of this world. We're 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 in. Let us we're we're in. We're they cool. will go ahead and just do it." Yeah. They'll do it. And then the or, the orthodox churches will be the ones it'll be the orthodox churches and like the Hasidic Jews. Mm -hmm. Right. It'll be those two. Mm -hmm. and and they'll be targeted and you saw what they did to the new york hasidic community right. during the, well they were the first uh, ones the... to really as a collective really resist and be like this is crazy it didn't get much coverage but it did mm -hmm. get some which i mm -hmm. found that very interesting is that it didn't get yeah. much but it did get some what was, i know next to nothing about this what what were they resisting oh they were like the first ones to be like the, re the restrictions, burning masks, the lockdown, just, the, okay, the, the masks, COVID stuff, yeah. Yeah, all that. You'll stuff. have to be, hey guys, you have to be more specific when you're talking about what crisis we're talking about because no, there's been a yeah, couple exactly. of them. Yeah, that's fair. Fair enough. There's been a couple fair of enough. them. Yeah. No, there was a bunch UFOs? of their, there was there was their leaders getting arrested in New York, mm -hmm. quite a few of them, because mm -hmm. the, uh, they wouldn't shut down their school, <laughs> they wouldn't mask the kids, right? You know, and it's like, because they've got big schools. Like they've got big schools in New York, like mm -hmm. those Hasidic schools, you know, uh, the um, uh, Sh Shabbat Sh Shabbat school? Sh school, but they they've got another it's like school got a, or something like that, isn't it? Like how they... yeah, they've they've got another. It starts with the CH C A. Hey somebody will correct. Somebody you're, will. You're uh, kind of being a little in. bit I'm racist not, right I'm now. <laughs> I'm just gonna guys, come on, that's racist. <laughs> no, they 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 they. they Look, it, and the Amish, nobody cares about the Amish, right? Yeah. Because they're doing their own thing, right? But they didn't do it either. The ortho, and, but I really think the crosshairs is going to be on orthodoxy because this is the one that people are converting to. Like, you can't right. convert into being Hasidic. Right. Well, yeah, and then not only that, but there's a the huge association with Russia, which I thought that was going to be the angle for a little while. It's just, oh, it just, will be. Still, it still might be. It, it will still be. might be. And it probably, it probably will be because here's the other thing, too. I think this is where the kind of NPC collectivism starts to play out because, you know, the red and the blue flag, you know, is only the red and the blue is two colors out of the other 20. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's, it's all part of the same flag. Sure. That, I think I think that's the thing that when we begin to really see, you know, I don't I don't know anything about wrinkle in time, but I get what you're saying about that. And we're, we're getting to see certain things come into focus. Um, it's a wheel of time. Wheel of time. Wheel of time. Wheel of time. <laughs> what, 
what I call it a wrinkle in time, wrinkle in time. Yeah, a wrinkle in time. That wrinkle in time. That, That's a I whole different. That, I love that series actually. Let's, yeah. Let's talk Mad- about Madeline that Langle. a little bit. Madeline no, I'm Langle. Kidding. I'm just kidding. But I mean, like that. That I thought that that because there was like some like borderline violence like it's against a couple russian churches at the beginning of the war where yeah. people would be like yeah. right i want to go home russia or something like that like on church doors and stuff like that there was like a couple of those that at least i saw and if i saw them then probably most people did because i don't pay that heavily attention to that kind of stuff so and what's interesting well, to me, this the, is, this the, is... the the blueprint was made the blueprint was made by voldemort like voldemort did the blueprint and it was basically to say like oh these these russian clerics and it's yeah. a russian orthodox church outside of of russia these orthodox clerics are spies for russia yeah yeah and it's, it's interesting to me because these ties with basically deep state church plants false false churches i mean this is this is a long standing thing Mm. But it's just come to the surface to such a degree. But when you get media outlets that are fishing now and trying to really kind of like get the scoop on like, well, what's going on with this surgence of, um, and, and I haven't seen it yet, but I'm sure, I'm sure some of these articles are going to start coming out like the surge in Russian orthodoxy. Like it's not going to be orthodoxy. It'll be it's Russian not going to be a surge in orthodoxy. It's going to be the surge in, in Russian orthodoxy. You know. Um, well, they put the split in place. The Ukrainian the Ukraine conflict has put that split in place. It, now. it has put the split in place. And I was just saying this today. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to say too much. <laughs> I mean, we're already in schism. I mean, you can already. This is a lot like, you know. Yeah, we say 1054, but it really wasn't until, you know, you start getting into the end of the the beginning of like the 12th century where it started to really kind of be formal, but it had been a long standing thing even long before that, right? And that that's yeah. what we're saying it's like the this thing with our president going over there and giving the exposure, like that's the thing that troubles me is that so many people's first exposure is him with these schismatics and with this, you know, wicked schismatic church. And that, that's really, um, that's And that was the photo that they chose specifically for the visit. That was like the big photo in all the papers and everything was them in front of their, the, the schismatic church headquarters. Yeah. Yeah. And let, and just, again, just to be clear, I just want to throw this out too because I don't, you know, I don't like throwing that word out. I'm not trying to throw it out like it's pancakes, but I mean, that's what, that's truly, you know, what's going on. Um, Because these, these false puppet churches that have been propped up in Ukraine, they are there because of, you know, ethno nationalism, Mm -hmm. political, financial reasons. They're not, they haven't pulled away because of Christ, quite the Mm -hmm. opposite. They sure. they haven't pulled away because of Christ at all. So it's like that's, I mean, these are the best examples of what schism is, in regards of you know, really kind of falling away and pulling I mean, away. It's so, like it's like one oh one, like yeah. schism. Mm-hmm. This is like this is schism. <laughs> it's like this is what a schism looks like. This right. is like what it looks like, like right in front of you. Right. This is because I just is. want to say this because it just to be clear, and I don't think I was clear just a second ago these false um hierarchs clerics in this false church they aren't the schism they're fomenting the schism that i want to be clear about that because they're not even legitimate in the first place they're fomenting the schism so what i mean by that is this the reality is that there's communities where families are being broken up because of this there's realities where parishes and things like that are struggling and it's fomenting schism. So it's getting people, for instance, it's getting all these NPC ortho people to want, I mean, I remember early on, like, gosh, I hate Facebook so much. Like I remember early on seeing like, there's a couple like priests out there who are just losing their cotton picking minds 
you know, uh, slandering Patriarch Kirill, you know, Russian priest slandering Patriarch Kirill. And I can't believe this is my patriarch. And, you know, like all this crazy stuff. That's what I mean by it's fomenting real schism. It's fomenting, you know, there's that terrible nun out there. Um, mm. <laughs> who mm. she's, good Lord. She's, you know, out there. She's, you know, does her druthers um, promoting the stuff and just talking about how she's ashamed of being in the Russian church and blah, blah, blah. This is what I mean by it's fomenting schism. Those guys, they're, they're false. They're not even, they weren't even in the, like, they're not the schism. The schism is what they're fomenting. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. They're they're moving the action forward. Like they're they're the ones that are like pushing this this thing yeah. along. They're rolling the 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 ball yeah. or whatever. Well, they're they're kind of a litmus test. They're a litmus test, right? That it's like, well, if you think these guys are legit, it's how you know where the schism is. Are they legitimate? Are they not legitimate? Right. right? And you could just immediately tell right. somebody who's like, oh yeah, they're totally legitimate. It's like, okay. Right. And so, I mean, all right. just to kind of play the hand, um, yeah, I'm just, Alexandria, like that, like people who aren't paying attention or, or a lot of people may not know, that's what happened two years ago. Uh, that's what happened the last two years. It's like these churches, it's like the Cyprus, the Ecumenical Patriarch, uh, again, Alexandria, you know, like, Patriarch Theodore is like, you know, basically flipping, you know, flipping the script like overnight and being like, oh, okay, yeah, well, we'll so we'll can celebrate with these guys. And like, that's, that's the schism, right? That's the schism right there. That's where you see this whole thing of people being like, well, you know, like in Africa and the Russian church in Africa actually trying to do something with Africans and people are like, oh no, you know, that's the Russians, blah, blah, blah. It's like, the that's fomenting the schism because those people first of all i'm just gonna say this uh you know a lot of these people who they want to be sympathetic like so the patriarch of alexandria patriarch theodorus which basically sided with the ep and ukraine and with these false hierarchs and thus this false quote-unquote ukrainian church um that movement right there that fomented schism in real communities in africa and the impact here in a lot of conversations were well you know the russians don't have a right to go in there blah 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 but you know no one was talking about how those parishes and those uh african priests there was a bunch of there was like a hundred plus Af there's a hundred plus African priests, and then it grew. Who decided to run to go with Russia because they were scandalized over the uh, Alexandrian patriarch going with this with the ecumenical patriarch with Ukraine, right? Because it's uncanonical. Yeah, and that's and the so, real issue, right? There. That's the real issue. That's the real schism, right? Because yeah. it's uncanonical. So what I'm trying to get at real quick is. I would I was privy to conversation. I was in conversations with certain people, and I just saw a lot of it, of course, through you know whatever Facebook. But uh, this thought where people were like, "Oh, you know, it's so terrible," and then it, it's just it's this is how it always is. Those same people who tend to be for quote unquote lack of a better word right now, it's not appropriate, but I'm just trying to get through. I'm trying to say woke who are usually like, "Oh, you know, the whole thing." All of a sudden now the African priests couldn't make an actual, <laughs> they couldn't make a proper decision, right? So it's like, it, it's that old line of, you know, how the left is typically actually the the bigoted ones because they have the soft, like the, the uh, soft bigotry of low expectations, right? Sure. So it's like, well, what my whole thing was these priests, oh, why? Because they're African, they couldn't have an ecclesiastical conscience. You see what I'm saying? They couldn't choose on their own to be like, no, oh. we don't want to be. This is this is scandalous. This schism scandalous. What's they were happening? saying, oh, they're just they're just backwards. They're just backwards. Exactly. They don't know. They exactly. don't know. So because, you don't know. exactly, and that's what all those left tootin, you know, the the super liberal ortho people were saying. All of a sudden, all of a sudden now, those same ones. Oh, they're just backwards. They don't get it. They're just trying to do what they can to get 
whatever material things they're going to get from Russia. It's like, okay, so now they now they're savages that don't know any better. You know what For I mean? Real. It's like the same argument when like a Ugandan person or whatever, I think we talked about this before, presents like an argument, perfectly ra rational sound argument against like homosexuality. Yep. It's like, yep. yeah, the, yeah, we we love praising these people. Man, yep. colonialism destroyed Africa. These wonderful, vibrant people. But they're backwards about homosexuality. Exactly. It's like, that, OK, exactly. all right. The civilization much older than America, like makes like Africa has underwear older than America. Like it's not even like <laughs> right. we're not even like at that spot. And like that was really good, Father, that we like you showed us this video a while ago of a real NPC mindset of like. Palestine versus <laughs> Israel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was like, they'd ask all these like alphabet suit people, be like, do you think Israel is guilty of war crimes? Um, and they're like, yes, absolutely. You know, we, we side with, um, we side with Palestine. And then it should like these videos of these interviews on the street, interviews with Palestinian people, be like, what do you think we should do to homosexual people? And like, oh, lock them up, execute them. They're a virus. Behead them. Behead them. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I'm certainly not condoning that. It's not what I'm saying. But suddenly, these NPCs were like, you know, these people were like, oh, I, I don't know about, I, I think this is changing my mind. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, so you really don't understand what's actually happening That's here. Right. And culturally, you don't understand because, this part of the world at all. Because this gets us back to, which is fine. I mean... I think we have maybe enough new people here that are watching that they haven't gone back further enough when we were riffing on um, the victim, the problem of the victim a while mm -hmm. ago. But mm -hmm. I mean, just bringing it up again, because again, what it is, is it presents the victim, you know, and it's the power of the victim and it's, it's the antichrist. It's the, it's the antichrist of the victim. Right. And so you present the victim and that's all that the, that's all that the NPC can, can pick up on. Right. And that's that thread of the NPC has savior complex. The NPC has, you know, all of these, everything that's happening to society, to American society, Western society, is everything that the NPC, you know, values and holds as the ideal. So um, a weakness that is, um, not salvific um <laughs> mm. a, a victimhood mm. that is not blameless mm. right you know i can go on and on but that like you start seeing that that's kind of like this whole um bully narrative and i was thinking about this the other day this is just a little rabbit trail not that we do any of those but uh this is highly unorthodox father <laughs> yeah you know i I've, I've had this thought we're just talking let's just couple friends talking but i've wondered it was like revenge of the nerds was that programming i, I I've would thought, i've thought about that as well because because the nerd narrative because i remember i remember like that was like a whole thing like that was a whole thing being a nerd was like a whole thing that movie came out whatever i grew up watching i mean i saw it came out in the theaters all that but then do you remember like the nerd started becoming accepted in the culture. And then with the nerd comes the kind of empowerment of the victim and the NPC. I mean, because if you think about it, the the nerd pro the nerd archetype is the kind of like seedbed by which all of this kind of comes out of. Well, it was oh. the rise of Silicon Valley happened at that exact same time. It primed the world for Steve Steve Jobs and Elon huh. Musk to be because before that you had industrialists, right? So you would have like Howard Hughes, mm. you know, Richard Branson. Like these are these are people, you know, uniquely about the two of them, like Howard Hughes and Richard Branson, right? Who both mm -hmm. aerospace, right. all of this came they came out of the entertainment industry. Howard Hughes was a mm. filmmaker, right? Branson right. was a record producer, right? Virgin, you, that's right. Virgin, right? So it's like. They they weren't nerds. No, they were the cool they were the cool kids. Mm -hmm. They were the cool guys. I and that's that was... industrialists were the cool guys. But see the thing is it's interesting because what you do is you take your ideal worker class, 
you take your ideal, what you would think would be the masculated, weak-willed, weak-minded, and thus kind of like even weak on a physical level um, subject, and how do you give them that sense of empowerment enough to where they can kind of become the jailers for you? You know what I mean? Sure. And, you, and, and, and by promoting that culture and promoting those those ethics and those lifestyles, you in essence begin to not only reproduce an ideally servile class of and like servile population, but you also give them just enough angst to make them good dogs too, to kind of like do your hurting and to some degree, maybe even God forbid, do the culling of the ones who have a spine left. Is this making sense what I'm no, saying? And not only that, it became the societal shift of beginning to worship the intellect rather than the athletic. Mm -hmm. Like, because then it's Well, like, that's what the movie's all about. That's what the movie Revenge of the Nerds is all about. Because the right. enemies are the jocks. Yeah, like, Ogre and the, yep, Ogre and the yeah, jocks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. Father and I were just talking about this last night. We are talking about, I was talking about how I was beginning to see the seeds of, of, the archetype or whatever being planted in early episodes of like the Simpsons, like Lisa is the smart, rational one that tends to make sense and tends to be right about things. And she's, you know, she is intellectual, she's cultured, she's feminist, you know, and like everyone else is kind of this idiot, you know, like, Mar and she's constantly butting heads with Marge, who is a, a, a well written, for several seasons eventually that changed but for several seasons well-written level-headed housewife who was very happy with her role and very content with her like her salvific work you know like her her long suffering when it comes to her husband her ability to, to try and raise children now she's not perfect of course but her and lisa there's a whole episode about how lisa is told by a standardized career test that she's going to become a homemaker and how she doesn't want that and the end of the episode is not her coming to peace with this, but it's like, oh, no, I'm going to prove them wrong and do whatever I want. You know, and I, is this any of this making any sense to you? Like, yeah. I, and the Simpsons came out at around the same time we're talking about. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I mean, it's there this was a total shift happening. It's this. Well, total, I, I, like, I saw a, a debate recently where they were talking about could like basketball players from the dream team era like uh, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, you know what I mean? Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. They were like, could those guys play in this era? And basically what came out of this thing was that they were like, it's a completely different game. They were like, the real thing is the guys today couldn't play in that era because it was so violent. It was so violent and physical. Like the way that, th the way that those guys, if you go back, seriously, if you go back and watch those games, like, because an era happened where, like, basketball players started flopping, like soccer players do. But these guys back in that time, they never did that. They were brutal. Dennis Rodman throwing elbows and clocking people yeah. in the head. Like, it was – that could never fly today. It was a different – and it's like that shift to where even now athletes have been emasculated, right? They're these pretty boy, you know – it's well, all about how much well, money they well, have, you know. Well, what I'm I mean? just, I'm not gonna, I'm not counting. I'm gonna say, well, this is, it's affected the church, because a lot of people they think the ideal, the ideal is okay. I mean, listen, I'm a nerd, okay. I'm a nerd, like whatever. I'm, not. I'm, just, I'm, I'm throwing it out there, whatever, right? I'm not. But like, well, by that definition, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm not coming out as trying to pull someone down. I'm just trying to, trying to say look the ideal priest is like well you have this you have this divide now and there this projection on the on, a, on what a monastic would be let's say for instance like a monk this kind of feminine you know mm -hmm. like hyper bookish hyper intellectual when actually like that's not that's not the monastic mm -hmm not only that's not the monastic ideal, but it's not even like the monastic average, you know what I mean? But that, 
that construct. Do you mean historically or you mean like now? Now. Both. Now. Okay. Historically yeah. and now. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, his, like, historically, every time I read, I'm reading about these these saints and it's like, oh yeah, he went out into the wilderness and he built two churches uh-huh. with his own hands. And I'm like, yo, uh-huh. yo, uh-huh. that's not, that is not a bookish character right there. No, no. And, and, and that's the thing is, part of that narrative and again i get it there's always the temptation right to fall into those things quote unquote toxic masculinity or whatever but the reality is is that that's what christ does you know what i mean christ develops a man develops a male into a man and develops a girl into a woman you know what i mean and those two those a man and a woman are the complement of each other that's what makes humanity and what you see is when people start living the ascetical, you know, life of repentance, they they begin to become hardier because part of being orthodox is learning to endure and suffer. Now it's not masochism, but it, it's really it's following the, it's following the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, right? So it's not about becoming some kind of brutish, you know boorish oath but it is about understanding that what's been presented to us traditionally what's been presented to us basically since the the beginning of time up until recently there are there is inherent value to it on on a real deep ontological level and the questioning of that is not only in every facet of society, it's starting to be in the church as well. It's been in the church. It's not a new phenomenon. What it is is now those things that have been on the margin are just kind of being the potential for them to be brought in and to be lifted up is, is growing. The danger of those, those aspects that have been on the margin, that danger is, is becoming more and more apparent because, because, those voices that want the margins, you know, it's like, is there a room in the church for gay people? Those who are repenting, absolutely. There's Come room in the down. church. Huh? Come on down. Come on There's down. room in the church for sorcerers if they're repenting. <laughs> There's room in the church for sorcerers. There's room in the church for everyone who's repenting. But like, here's the here's the secret. Here's why all this matters, because I, I know it feels like, we're, and maybe to some degree, we're just riffing on a kind of a sociological bit. But I just want to bring it all home to Christ and say, here's why it matters. Because repentance is a manly job. <laughs> it's a manly work to repent. And that's why in our hymnography, talking about St. Mary of Egypt, talks about, you know, these the feminine, uh, the woman ascetics, you know, it's like St. Theodore. It's like the manly courage, mm-hmm. right? Like it's women, by the way, speaking about women, like it takes, it, it's, it's, it is vigorous, manly work to repent it's not for the faint-hearted it's just it's not right it's not and so i think that's one of the things that's what i want to kind of really bring home is because more than just the external affects of like you know whatever the bookish kind of like stereotype is um harry potter all that stuff the end of the day is what it really is about is that the character the character yeah. What it what is the caricature presenting to you? The caricature is presenting to you a fundamental weak character. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying that mm-hmm. that caricature of the fundamentally weak, neurodemasculated, you know, um, petty. You know what I mean? Petty, always like you know, I I got done it, I got done wrong, whatever you know, and that and that resentment is a sentiment that's underneath a lot of things, you know? Um, that is so antithetical to repentance because someone who's actually repenting, if, you know, a, someone, who's, someone who's repenting doesn't even, not only do they not bother with resentment, they run from it. They run from it because someone who's, re- an Orthodox Christian who's authentically repenting if they get even a hint of that, they want nothing to do with it because they see whatever is causing them to have resentment, they see that as God's providence, showing them their passions, and they want to do violence to those passions. And they want to be like, nope, nope, and, they, and they'll embrace that. And that's where 
the the radical extreme humility of our savior and the saints comes into play mm. right because mm. they recognize the weakness within them that wants to be petty that wants vengeance that is resentful that is self-serving that is vainglorious like all those things those are all those weak tendencies of the human character char character that christ is calling us to do violence against and to expunge mm. from us mm. right and to be clear he calls us to expunge them because he brings up the circumstances the question is is will we participate with them mm. and oftentimes we don't right here's the situation oh i was done wrong boom what are you going to do with it are you going to run with it and be like good or are you going to be like, nope, and then point fingers and then be mad and blah, blah, blah. Start dwelling on it and dwelling on it and dwelling yeah. on it. Yeah, and, and and I think that's where a lot of the narrative of like, you know, the nerd getting justice or like, even like, oh, you you yeah. bully alpha male or whatever the thing is, you know? Well, it's, revenge is revenge runs through all of that. Whether it's well, revenge, revenge of the, the nerds. It's literally <laughs> called <laughs> revenge of the one. nerds. But <laughs> Harry Potter, like, I'm just thinking of all these points in Harry Potter where it's like, him and his crew are getting revenge yep. on somebody who's done them wrong. Yep. Uh, and and it's and it's like, oh, it's just kids doing pranks. And it's like, no, no, no. It's very much about them making sure somebody else gets their comeuppance, That's gets right. turned into a frog, gets injured. You know what I mean? Something bad happens to this other person because they did something. Right. And it's like, you victimized me. So now I'm going to victimize you. And, and I never put this together, but I think this kind of gives at least me an insight into what we've been talking about the last, I don't know, not the last few weeks, but talking about, you know, the adult baby, the adult child and the terror of the adult child. It's like, where did that come from? It's like, oh, all of these kids grew up on Harry Potter. <laughs> you know what I mean? All these kids now who are like these, you know, basically adult, you know, children that are terrorizing everyone because it's like, excuse me, sir excuse me if you don't use my pronouns or excuse me sir like that super scary uh it goes beyond passive aggressive you guys know what i'm talking about oh yeah it's, well, it's a spell aggressive. it's a it it's a, a magic spell it's a magic spell that they're wielding against somebody else that's what they're doing yeah and it's a spell that they learned at hogwarts like all, all the universities and everything have become hogwarts now and they teach you the spells they teach you the they, they teach you the magic spells, yeah. and then you go out and you and you do it and you wear your little with you wear your little wizard robe with your color your hair you know what I mean in a particular way, <laughs> chop chop off parts of your body you know what I mean and you wear the thing and then you go and you oh. do the spell on everybody yeah and you and you change people into into something else you change keep your and you're changing the world and the other things right like it's lord a have spell. mercy lord right. have mercy That's I, this, it. this is <laughs> too good. <laughs> <laughs> this is That's not it. this show to sit there to sit here and complain but uh on wikipedia <sighs> which is the star wars wikipedia mm -hmm. they now have people's pronouns like like zorb no. from planet seven whatever is now the they them you know like so i i looked up something because of some random character or whatever and i looked up something it was like the pronouns of this character and i was like Oh, see, what even into even anything? into the fantasy world. I mean, I mean, one of the, one of the things this is like, you know, one of the one of the hallmarks of anything that we would call a tradition, right, is one of the things that they have is what is it to be a man and what is it to be a woman. Anything that you would call a tradition, right? That's like, whether it's a, a faith tradition, whether it's a cultural tradition, it's like men do this, women do this. Mm. And there's this very, and I, I do think that this is the place where it's it's going to be the place where, where they're going to try to break orthodoxy. Because the thing is, like, we can't say there is more than two genders. We can't. Like, everything falls apart. The icons on the iconostasis fall apart if we do that. Everything actually. falls apart. Everything falls apart. It's sort of the most like, it's, basic... it's a complete denial of everything. Of reality. Of reality. It's like it's not even like going in and taking like the Jenga tower and like finding the right one. It's like no taking the entire bottom row out of the tower. Yeah. It's like oh, yeah. one of the most fundamental basic principles is that 
you know, boys are boys and girls are girls. And that's just, well, wow. and, and that it, and that it has to be. Yeah. Because the, in, the reality of the incarnation can't happen otherwise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so the, the other thing too, is like this, um, uh, I mean, what was, who was, is it Kevin Smith, the dogma movie? Mm -hmm. But yeah. even that, like yep. the undermining of the, even the, the concept, the principle of dogma, that there are things that are absolute and shall not be moved, you know, like that, that of itself, which is, I mean, you start getting into, you begin to see why it was, it's so important to, for like the, for the, the Roman church, for the Latins, just the undermining from within, because mm -hmm. it, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't the 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 destruction of the Roman Catholic Church wasn't an external thing. It wasn't culture. I mean, nobody from, came they, along and said, "You guys have to do yeah, Vatican was, Vatican II or whatever." It was from within. It's from within. It's the same thing now with Orthodoxy. Yeah, it's 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 from within, and it's just interesting because it. Well, whatever. It's just maybe this is the hate mail um, episode, but you know when you see using um, migrant populations as weapons to destabilize mm. uh, populations, mm. right? Mm -hmm. It makes me wonder sometimes about the influx coming in sometimes because yep. what is who all it takes is the one person. Let's say a hundred, you got a hundred good, you know, a hundred good actors, hundred, you know, good faith actors, whatever takes the one that that comes in who's really looking to undermine because it, it's always from within sure and so you know no heretics are always from within and those who would be um looking to destabilize and, and everything's set up you know everything's set up to do that because with um the 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 false church in ukraine and the kind of circling back around those very strong ecumenical movements um, that are already in place. I mean, everything's set to just kind of like sweep away the rubbish of people who are holding to the tradition, but sweep them to the catacombs and just erect very quickly the shiny cupolas and domes of um, these churches that are ready to accept everything in the name of a more polite um, just a more polite orthodoxy. A, luke, a lukewarm orthodoxy. I mean, it seems crazy to me like that. And it's, it's just, again, it's like, it's the litmus test. Like here we're looking at this picture in front of a cathedral, what looks like an orthodox cathedral, right? And as I understand, I, I guess it's St. Michael's. As I understand it, that was blown up by the Soviets. And then this church just rebuilt it in the last several years. Like they built built a new church in this in that spot. Mm. but it's like who's standing in front of it and that was obviously approved by them like it's a jewish guy and a and a bad catholic yeah you know what i mean <laughs> it's like and that's cool with you that you were like oh yeah photo op in front of our orthodox church please so that we can be associated with you yeah and it's like uh pretty sure that's not the orthodox church yeah. this that, that the fact that that happened that should just pretty much tell you right there that's not the orthodox church that's that's as a phrase we've used a lot but that's kind of a litmus test right there that's a litmus okay. test. Yeah, it's it's all it's all a litmus test, and I think I think Father, with this influx thing, I've thought about that a lot as well. Um, and I know that, like, at least to whatever degree, I know that that my own conversion has played has played a role because I think of the, at least in my own little community, I know that I was like. I was probably the first out of the out of this kind of group and the most vocal that that started making that move. Um, I, I think I think the question that is not being asked enough, and that maybe I need to start asking more. And it seems like really rude, but it, I think it can spark a conversation. Is like, why are you here? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like why? Like why are you here? Mm -hmm. I mean my. I think my answer is probably outwardly obvious that it's like, because I became incredibly corrupt and, and spiritually sick. And I can't, I don't, I don't have another means of, mm -hmm. of being healed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Like, I think mine's obvious, right? Like, it's just like, yeah, well, that's, that's, that's true. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, I think to ask like, well, why, why are you here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of the reasons why, you know, like it, it could be a good game plan. Cause you know, I, I get, you know, I get contacted, like, what should I do? Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. A good game plan is like, if you're serious about salvation, if you're serious about being healed and, and not having, you know, the hell that you're already tasting not consume you forever, then yeah, just kind of like get in where you can. But then once you're in, you better find a place, a community and a breeze and like all the good stuff that's really going to like push you and you better learn to to taste that fire. I mean, this was just the judgment, you know, judgment Sunday we just passed. So they, the judgment and um the judgments now, like not even like metaphorically, like literally, like those of us who are living in the church, living Christ, we we know the pain of that, which again, no one talks about that. Like for all the big stuff that goes around and all the numbers, um the the conversations that get the numbers, they never talk about this. They never talk about this is so painful if you're doing mm -hmm. it right. Mm -hmm. They never talk about this. It's so painful if you're doing it right. Um, but I would just say, that's what you need to do. If if you aren't struggling, like, you know, not even just as plain as I can say, if you're not struggling, something's wrong. You know, if it's- It's if, really hard to be a Christian father. Like, it's, it's really hard. It's the hardest, it's it's the hardest thing. It's death. It's death. And if, if, you're, if you're not struggling, and it's just, it's all, it's all the fan club and it's all just, you know, everyone's, you know, patting each other on the back and we're number one and blah, blah, blah. That's fine. There's a, there's a place for that. Sure. But if you're not having those moments where it's like, okay, I need to look at like, okay, you got your one finger. Okay, great. You get to use the one finger. If you're not looking at the other three, <laughs> you know what I mean? That are, that are coming back at you or the other four. <laughs> I was like, okay, there's, if there's Chad, some, if, there's a uh, deeper if mid, meaning if mid, here. If Mid Journey had made the, uh, if Mid Journey had made it, then yeah, there would be four pointing <laughs> back at you. I I figured you knew what you're talking about, and I was like, okay, there's some kind of deeper spiritual meaning by what he's saying. The other three, not just that perhaps my my spiritual father's very tired. But no, that's right. You no, point three one forward one and finger. three come back. Sure, one, two, three, three. coming back at you. But the fourth is the fourth is that, the that's added finger. by the AI. Oh, uh, okay. So then I have to ask. You're the tired one, my friend. No, I am, without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, uh, so, um, Father, was that you sent that thing? Was that like a? Was that like VR or was that like an implant? Because it was AI. It was, had to be AI. AI. So yeah. it was this AI generated video. Yeah, they're doing. Okay. He was he was showing us that we're do, they're doing video. Now. I didn't know what that was. I was like, did somebody? Is this like VR? Is somebody's like, oh, I have six fingers. I got you. Oh no, it's like a, it's a nail ad. Stuart sent it to me. It's a it's a nail ad from mm -hmm. like I don't know what that script is. I don't know if it's like Thai or whatever it was, but yeah. It's coming undone. I'm coming undone. But okay, so um, before, because we're kind of coming close to the end, but um, I had a I had a question for you actually, Father, that came up this week or last week, something like that. And I was wondering if you could speak on a little bit. It's Exodus nine twelve, um, and God uh hardened Pharaoh's heart, <laughs> um, and uh, would not listen to Moses. Or uh, no, I'm not going to read that translation. Uh, and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had spoken unto Moses. So I basically uh, was running through something on, on the Internet. I don't remember. But it was basically like that called into question free will. And I was wondering it because like God had kind of like hardened Pharaoh's heart against this decision to make him kind of like not to make him, but to kind of like scoot him in a direction of like saying no to Moses is, am I interpreting that correctly? I'm sure I'm not, which is why I'm bringing it up. And if you want, we can wait till next week if you're not prepared to speak on it. But um, yeah, what, what's up with that? What's up with God hardening Pharaoh's heart? Yeah. 
I'm trying to think. There's a really great uh, quote. I'm trying to think which father it was that really kind of breaks this down really good. Um, but one way to definitely understand it is that um, the problems, like the way it's tran the way that's translated or like written, it's like okay. the emphasis isn't isn't like God turning pharaoh's heart like out of the blue it's not like pharaoh's like you know what man what have i been doing okay hey don't worry about it you know like oh man i love you guys it's, it's not like a 180 it's sure. like pharaoh's heart was already set on you got you gotta take up you gotta think about the disposition right um because remember something joseph led the people and Joseph like basically gave the Israel gave Israel uh the Hebrews a right name in Egypt. Okay. And then when you read that after that, there was a Pharaoh that knew not Joseph and began to basically set his face against um um Israel, right? Okay. And so so now you have this time in which Egypt no longer like, and this gets into the whole thing about Egypt because remember this plays out in regards of the Lord going into Egypt and finding rest there and finding refuge there. But anyways, so what it is is Pharaoh's heart was already moved that way. There he already like Egypt represents the world, represents the passions, represents um, slavery. Slavery also represents occult knowledge. Oh, right, and okay. and occult knowledge, occult knowledge in particular, is something to always pay attention to, because occult knowledge is always set, um, always set against the Lord, mm -hmm. right? Gnosticism, Gnosticism, occult knowledge, like it, it's always set against the Lord. It's always taking the things of the Lord without acknowledging the Lord. That's that's okay. that's why it's so terrible. Right. Okay. So it's not like God's like, oh, you're a great guy. And I'm going to do it just because like to show that I'm the, ma the the puppet master. It's his heart was already inclined that way. He just revealed and kind of like move forward for his purposes. You know, the hardening of his heart, meaning, look, you're already headed this way. OK. You know, because each time there was a repentance that could have happened, but it he didn't doubled down. He doubled down. But the other thing is, too, is, you know, the Lord kills a million birds with one stone, not just two. Mm. Because also what's revealed to Moses and to the children of Israel, which is fundamentally for our benefit, right? Because ultimately Egypt would be redeemed through this movement. Because by allowing the Hebrews to go and by the Hebrews going the way that they did, this sets the trajectory by which the nation of Israel would be on this very, very, very long journey of purification, this very, very long journey of coming into becoming who they should have been. Mm. And that culmination is the mother of God. All of it happened so the mother of God sure. could be brought forth. Sure. Right. Mm. So Egypt gets its redemption because Egypt offers sanctuary to the Lord and his mother. Oh, oh, oh. All right. That's cool. That's the that's the full circle. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Speaking that is really, like wow. That's yeah. that's deep. Yeah, and it's it's really important because wow. it's really important because we read like I just want to throw this out here to help everyone just to kind of like during Lent kind of consider this right. Um. If you're focusing on the 5% that you're troubled with and forgetting the 95 that God's done for you, you're you're out of you're out of balance, you're out of whack. Yeah. You're out of whack. And so you a lot just, of that our, was the theme of my father, you just <laughs> you just knocked it out of the park with everything that's happened in my life in the last week. Yeah, Speak I mean that, please. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, like that I just want to say like you're out of whack. Like you're really out of whack. You know, if you're if everything about you is like how you're being tempted, how this person is doing this to you and la, 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 you're out of whack. 
Um, I'm going to tell you something. You'll very quickly become Pharaoh. Your heart's going to get hardened quickly yeah. because that's already the trajectory because you got this 95% that God's done for you and you got this 5% that you're stuck on. And that, that was the, that's the trip with Pharaoh. Right. Yeah. Um, and so understand that quickly because that movement, even that movement of that hardening the heart, God still meant it for, it still turned out for good. And that, that's our key thing, right? Is that you will see in your chastisement, Romans 8, 28, all things work for good for those who love God and call to his purposes. So for instance, if you are falling in despair and despondency because of, of discipline, then you aren't, then you do not have a right understanding of God. You do not have a right vision of God. You aren't seeing things correctly. Sure. Right. And that's, that's another way to understand that hardening of the heart. You know what I mean? But God will bring it about. He will bring, he, he will use it ultimately for like the redemption, you know? Um, I, so speaking of full circle, I was wearing, and maybe this is a fairly common icon. I had never seen it before, but I haven't been Orthodox really that long. But Father, uh, have you seen this icon? I'm, maybe this is a common depiction of Judas turning away and, and leaving. The halo being there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. So yeah. Um, I just linked it in the group chats. Cyprian, is there any way to bring that up? Yeah. Is it is it that the that the halo stays as he leaves? The halo. Stays yeah, and his face, the it, the outline of his face is is where it should be. Where like, I'm. Would you? Oh, whoa. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I don't know. I can't pull it. I can't pull it onto this That's... machine, but I could probably find it. I'll find okay, it. Okay. Sure. On. I'm good at this. I'm like uh, I'm like Joe Rogan's uh, Jamie. Let's yeah. see. I, uh... It's it's interesting too. I just want to say. Well, I just. I want to riff on this a little bit because I, I brought this up. I think it was like Monday or whatever. Oh. Yep, I found it. Boom. Look at that. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's this very unique icon of... It's from, It's off of Reddit. Good job, wow, Reddit. a Reddit post. Reddit? Look at you, Reddit. Look at you, Reddit. I can truly doing, baptize doing something, anything. I'm saying... Seriously, I can truly though. baptize anything. <laughs> The cesspool, the yeah. absolute cesspool. Okay, hold on. Let me uh, let me. Oh, I want you to hang on to that thought you're about to say. Because yeah. hold on, let me pull this up. Here we go. There, there it is. Yeah, Judas leaving the Last Supper. Yeah, yeah. The halo stayed. Yeah. Man, that's so cool. Yeah. That is that is profound. It is. I wouldn't expect to see that in an icon. You see the little devil on his shoulder yeah. too. Yeah, there's yeah. a little devil on his shoulder. Wow. Yeah, it's good. And it's right in his ear. Right in his yep. ear. Yep. Wow. Anyway, follow. Yeah, it's funny because you know the thing is, is like, oh, I'm just, you know. It's something that nobody wants to go through and, and not everyone goes through it, but just that uh, being betrayed. I think a lot about that um, in regards of like our Lord and his betrayals, you know, because it wasn't just Judas because Peter betrayed him too, you know, Peter denied him. Mm -hmm. um, and then you kind of get this contrast between Peter, Peter's denial and his betrayal and Judas's and it's like, um, they both have the sense that they know better than the Lord. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, this, this, this kind of understanding or narrative, like, you know, obviously Judas was a thief, but also Judas being this kind of like, you know, uh, the idea of knowing better, right. It's like that could have been given to the poor, you know, sure. just like he's, he's holding the money bag. You see how he's holding the money bag in his hand, his other hand, you know? Um, oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but this thing of like, oh, someone could be doing it better. I I know I I could, maybe even I could do it better. You know what I mean? And that that betrayal, because people forget. I I just, it's so important to remember. Judas was one of the twelve. That's why, it sounds terrible, but, uh, 
there it's not there's it's not a comfort but there's a reality of just i mean the lord desired judas to to not do that as well you know he didn't deny judas anything that he didn't give the rest of the apostles you know um but judas thinking that he knew better you know and judas like oh, i love jesus i love jesus <clears throat> and the whole time you know fomenting and sowing discord you know probably like well you know is he really doing it right you know what is he really doing with the romans you know this whole thing um whereas peter's betrayal is 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 of a different nature you know his betrayal is out of his own hubris um his own kind of self-assuredness and his cowardice you know um but it's important because i i because Judas is a real warning to all of us. Um, and, and I think it's important too. Judas is a warning to a lot of people who, um, you know, think that they might know better um, and, and fall into a real, a real ditch over it um, and, and end up betraying the Lord, you know, uh, because they think that they know better um, and and begin to really foment that dissension among among the people among the disciples, you know. So Father Cosmos well, always says, "Sorry, Cyprian." Father Cosmos always says, um, "If you wonder why God allow, or is it possible that God could allow bad bishops and bad priests?" He's like, mm -hmm. "Well, look at Judas; he was one of the twelve, you know." Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I just want to. I know you say something stupid. I just want to bring it home real quick on that because it could be like, "What are you talking about, Father?" It's like. Okay, look, for as much, you know, I don't consider black pilling at all, just for as much as we talk today, just in general, but like the problems, whatever, I always bring it back to Christ. And I'm I'm a big believer of look, um for the most part, I just try to assume and think that most people here, you know, if if you're not big boys and girls, you you wanna be. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're trying to be big boys and girls. And so if you're scandalized by this stuff, like you can't be like, I'm not scandalized, but I, I'm, 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 I'm heartbroken. It's, it's, it's unnerving. It's all that stuff, but I'm not scandalized in the sense of the stumbling block because scandal, right. It's, that's what that means. Right. I'm not like my faith isn't rocked because of the, the, the false churches in Ukraine. My faith isn't rocked because of, you know, the hyper liberal woke orthodox. And my faith isn't rocked because of the, you know, nationalist soft, you know, soft ethno supremacists in the church either. I just my faith isn't rocked by that. You know, what I mean, I don't I don't start walking around like, well, I don't even know this is all real. That that's I just maybe this is the moral of the story tonight. Is like that stuff is out there. Don't get rocked. It's part of it. You know what I mean? Because Judas got rocked by it, you know, and for a believer, for one who's loyal to the king, for one who is loyal to the lover of their soul, they just see that as as the scrub brush. <laughs> you know what I mean? They see that as the scrub brush. They see it as what's necessary for the purification. But I guess this gets, gets back to like, like what you were saying, Cyprian is like, well, why are you here? You know? And then I would just say it's like, um, where are you going to go? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 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 where are you going to go? And and that's the thing is once you kind of understand that, um, you know, this thing of going back and looking at yourself, once you do that, once you look at yourself and you realize those things that you're mad about, that 5% that you're mad about, just tell yourself, shut up, you know, shut up and, you know, sit down, be humble. Look, let be humble let the lord wash your feet you know be like peter yay lord you know wash my feet and my head you know and just allow the difficulty of whatever small thing you're going through forgive me i know it feels like it's the whole world to you but let's just be honest it's small you know yeah. and just just go through it because judas refused to go through it you know i was just quoting kendrick lamar that's why I said that, like, because you sit said, down, be humble. Yeah. 
I, I'm you probably father had a better point than that, but I heard it and I was just like, well, I'm going to say it. So. I doubt it. Yeah. Well, my I lesson. think the, the, the difference, like I'm seeing this difference of like denial versus betrayal, you know, like Peter's was denial, mm-hmm. you know, like he's denying Christ. And I feel like there's a certain, I mean, like- if, if I'm honest, I, I deny Christ in big and small ways every day. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, and I'm in repentance for that. Like still I do. You know what I mean? And, but betrayal, that's something completely different. And it's, it's almost like, it's almost like, you know, the fact that I recognize when I, when I am denying Christ in some way speaks to me about how terrible I would, how terrible I would feel or how I can't even imagine betraying, you know, because like you say, father, it's like, well, then where do I go? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, at least in the ways that I fail and I fall, like, at least I'm welcome back. Mm -hmm. But to betray, there's nowhere, there's nowhere to go. Yeah, there's nowhere to go. And I mean, I I just had a flash to this thought of, you know, a lot of these, a lot of the people come, I don't know, I just pray that, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this, because it's going to be so outlandish what I really want to say, because what I really want to say is, I just hope that, like, who wants to be the priest? Who wants to be the one that's, you know, going to lose people for telling people what's up? You know what I mean? Like, nobody nobody wants to do that, you know? I And believe me, I get it. I get it. There's a time in my life I was guilty of that, too. But, you know, uh, it's really important that people kind of wrap their mind around that because... Um, you know, people get upset over the smallest things now. You know what I mean? Smallest things now. Can you imagine when when stuff's really on the line? Yeah. You know what I mean? Can you imagine when stuff's really on the line? And, and that, I think that's the thing too, is that, you know, Peter eventually got the, the vision, but what did the Lord say to him? He said, and when you are restored, strengthen your brethren. Uh, right because at that point in time remember peter he man peter had grace and he's like who you who do men say that i am lord says to him peter gets grace boom you're the son of the god right you're the messiah flesh and blood has not revealed this to you peter right boom next movement lord you'll never go to the you'll, you'll, you'll never go to the cross blah, blah blah get thee behind me satan right yeah super super quick so this reality of of this needing to kind of be corrected and get right vision again it's tough for people because pete you know people like peter they get hung up on their thing because they think that their thing is the thing that's what everybody needs yeah right peter's all about the right ministry for the people the right you know so is judas you know to some degree right or what's best for me but the Lord's like, that's not the way, man. The way is what I got to do, the cross, which is not, not what, it's not on your program. And so for a lot of people, when the cross is coming, there's going to, you know, a, everyone is going to have that moment if they're really going to be a disciple of Christ where they're going to face that and the cross is going to be so in front of them. But I think the mistake people make is they think that they'll always know the cross and when to pick it. Yeah. And you won't. This gets us back to what we used to talk about in regards of knowing your line. Like if you don't know your line in those small ways that you were offended, quote unquote, if you can't find the cross in those small, the small little quibbles, the small little ways where you felt offended or neglected or whatever, you're not going to find the real cross that that's going to matter. And it can become very easy to find yourself in a place like Peter or God forbid Judas. Yeah. You know? I uh I think it was just like a certain like what I've always taken it as is there's just like a certain like in Saint Peter, you know, forgive me, but there's just like a little bit of like idiocy to Saint Peter. He just kinda like like that's what my baptizing priest said was he was just kind of a, a little bit of an idiot at that moment. He just was like it was out of foolishness, like not out of like calculation. 
Judas is just like out of calculation of like, I'm going to profit from this. And uh, Peter was like out of like a baser instinct for survival. And Judas was like, no, I want, I want, I want what's coming to me, you know? And Peter was like, uh, um, no, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. Like, no, that's no, no. But so, he also hadn't yet seen the cross, you know? Sure. After he's, after he saw the cross, then there wasn't a question and he went oh, to the no. cross. And then he know? went to the cross. You know? Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was cool. Later on, I mean, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. St. Peter is incredible. And, but I could, but I could understand not, having not seen the cross and only encountered the the living christ that it would have been like oh this is a super this is superman nothing mm -hmm. nothing could possibly happen to this guy. oh sure you know I mean, what i mean <laughs> yeah i mean uh, i mean saint john chrysostom has this whole sermon on the i'm getting out of my depth again the maccabees and that was like that was pre-christ right father like like oh, yeah mm -hmm. yeah so there's this whole family a mother watched seven of her children be murdered and there was no promise of the resurrection at that point that's her love for god was was her refusal to acquiesce to the powers that be at that moment and she willingly sacrificed all seven of her children and then herself with no promise of anything and frankly if i'm to be martyred if that's what god wills that's the only reason i'm doing it i mean i'm doing it for the love of god but i'm like i know something is i'm going to be okay like, I know that things will be okay, more or less, you know, or it could not be as well. But like, if I'm being martyred, there's there's a good chance, like, you know, I trust in God that things will eventually work out, hopefully, for good out of this. Um, but, you know, that's pre-Christ. I don't know who's doing that. I mean, aside from these prophets and then these Maccabees and stuff like that. So, yeah. well, I mean, the the I think to go back, father to what you said about knowing the cross i think that this is kind of the thing with martyrdom right because like the martyr the martyrdom isn't necessarily the death part the martyrdom is the bearing witness part right because martyr means witness that's right and i think that that's that's the place that people and that's where peter failed right is like he didn't bear witness in that moment mm -hmm. and it's like i think that this is what we're really talking about and, and father when you say like the the line that it's really like it's I think it's not going to be, oh, you're being presented with your death, right? It's like, ah, just a pinch of incense. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side of that, if you say no, it's like, well, there's your death. So you're like, huh, death or pinch of incense. And it's like, ah, well, maybe I could come back from a pinch of incense. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just go and confess and, you mm -hmm. know, then and it's like, yeah, but the pinch, but then the pinches just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that that's the thing is that, I don't think people, I think, I think it's easy to be like, well, yeah, if I die in the service of, of God, like, okay, then, well, I'm, I would then, say, then I'm a martyr, right? I but, just want to say this too. It's one of the reasons why, <clears throat> you know, there's a place of acceptance for the slave and the servant, but ultimately it's like, you don't really want to gamble and be like, I'll just be there. You really want to try to make it to, to being a son yeah. because a slave and a servant be like, ah, I'll confess. You know what I mean? Um, I'll get in on the the letter of the law, the technicality, all those things. You know what I mean? And I, I just, it's, I wouldn't it's go okay. there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take that gamble. Not even just in the sense of like, Oh, I wouldn't cause you'll go to hell. But like, that's not love. That's not, he's, he deserves more than that. Sure. You know, the Lord deserves and not only that, but how many people live their whole lives as an aesthetic wrapped in grace and at the last minute because of some inadequacy or whatever, their grace was robbed of them and they go insane and they start renouncing Christ like on the mm -hmm. on the gallows or whatever, you know, like there's the I like that one priest is like chasing after uh, there's the story of the priest and a deacon who were at odds. Mm. And the priest is on his way to his martyrdom and the deacon's like following him or I can't remember if it's reversed. Oh, that's he's like right. begging him to forgive him, forgive him. He's like, I'm not going to forgive you. And right mm -hmm. at the moment, the grace leaves him and he's like denies Christ. Yeah. And then the deacon, the deacon like, goes says, up instead. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, Gentlemen, I got to wrap it up. This, is, right. this yep. is this is a good conversation. I could keep going, but my baby's going to wake up soon. So do it. Do it. Um, 
Okay, uh, so something I forgot to mention at the beginning of the episode, and I hope everybody's oh, yeah. still with us, is we are looking to find clips. We're going to start uploading some clips to different places. So if there's um, particular sections in the episode or something that you guys really felt like would be a good, succinct little 15, 25 second clip um, so of some good nuggets or whatever, please point it out to us in the comments. Um, we will certainly take that into account. Um, use it. Use a timestamp. YouTube comments. Time stamp. Put a timestamp. Put a timestamp, please. It. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Cyprian. Um that would be much appreciated. And of course, if you know us in real life, then you just come up, approach us and talk to us or whatever, or just text it to us. That's fine. Um, again, uh, I still haven't updated it, but every time we talk about music or whatever, I put it on a Royal Path pl podcast playlist, something like that on Spotify. It hasn't been updated in a couple of weeks. I apologize. Um, if you feel like getting in contact with us, Andrew at royalpath.network um please send your emails there that'd be awesome jack you're killing it uh yeah that uh, last one was, ooh, it was good it was good the wow. hands yeah the hands yeah it was good wow. that was really really good um yeah you're killing it you're killing it dude thank you um and then also uh we have a link to the mount tabor school um that is a school that through our parish through father's parish that i attend um not the school but the parish uh if you feel like donating that would be awesome uh there's a link there and then also there was a family that's very close to our hearts father was the dad was recently uh injured in a car accident they're needing money because he's going to be out of work for... actually i think they closed check check on it but i think they actually thanks be to god i think they uh really okay all closed, right uh, closed very good. Their, um... double check it we'll double check it anyway if nothing else pray for them um uh uh paisios and Zenia. yep Hayosios and Zenia and their family. Um, if nothing else, please pray for them. Um, and then uh, I think we have a store, uh, merch store, royalpath.store. Uh, we don't see those proceeds. They go to either the church and then a little bit to the person who makes them. And I think that's it. Other than that, uh, thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.